That's a big advantage. So um, I, uh, I just uh, wanted to tell everybody about a, a project that we've been working on um, for a while now. And uh, uh, I talked about this a little bit last year at the GNU Radio Conference, but uh, now it's um, a completed project and it's uh, uh, you know, generally available, uh, although we don't uh, mention it much on our, um, our website yet. And uh, it, it might be of interest to some of you. Uh, the, the QR210, or which we also uh, refer to as a quad radio, uh, was developed um, under contract, and, uh, but we've, we were able to uh, sell it uh, to the general public. Uh, and um, so it, it's a, a, a radio very much in the vein of the USRP. Um, logically, the, the, the blocks in the block diagram are very similar. A lot of the code is similar. It works with UHD and GNU Radio, of course. Um, but the, the one main difference is sort of the, uh, the target market. So this is a, um, uh, a, a very high-end, uh, very high dynamic range um, radio, and so that has certain costs to it. So it's not in the same price category as USERPs, um, but it works with the same software and is uh, uh, fully compatible um, with, with uh, GNU Radio, and, and that's, of course, its intended... Uh, uh, use case. So uh, the basic idea was, it, it, so it's a receive-only device. Um, it has four antennas, and it covers 700 megahertz to 4 gigahertz. And uh, within that, you can get 60 megahertz of instantaneous bandwidth. So uh, uh, 60 megahertz uh, of bandwidth at 16-bit samples uh, is more than you can fit through a gigabit Ethernet interface. And so this device actually uses a 10 gigabit Ethernet interface. And so um, it's uh, 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 between the combination of the four antennas and the, the wider bandwidth on each one that we actually come very near to filling up a 10 gigabit Ethernet uh, uh, interface. So obviously you're going to need a, a pretty hefty computer to back this up, or a computer or group of computers uh, to back this up. But um, you know, let me give you a... a a little more info on it. So, it, uh, or maybe it's best if I go to the block diagram first. Um, so the uh, the quad radio has uh, four um, radio boards in it, and each uh, each radio board uh, is uh, phase coherent. So you can do uh, beam forming and MIMO and uh, and uh, and those sorts of applications. That's it, it, its main uh, uh, purpose in life, and. Uh, the, all of that feeds what we call the MIMO processing engine, which is really a, a, a large FPGA. In this case, it's a Vertex 5 uh, uh, SXT95 uh, FPGA. And that will output over 10 gigabit Ethernet your, your sample streams. So this SXT95 has uh, 640 DSP units, uh, which is, uh, I don't know, roughly four times as many as a, in an N210, for example. Um, and they operate a lot faster because it's a Vertex 5 as opposed to um, a Spartan chip. And so um, we, we provide the com uh, complete DSP chain, uh, which leverages a lot of the IP from our um, uh, other UHD devices, but it's more, um, it, it, it's, it's tuned for this, this high-end device with the, the much bigger DSP units that the, uh, the Vertex has and uh, to take advantage of all this additional bandwidth. And uh, so... Again, in keeping with the high dynamic range, we have 16-bit A to Ds, uh, although the RF architecture is very similar to, uh, let's say, an SBX and an N210. Yes? Max? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. So the Super MIMO connection, uh, it, it, so if four antennas aren't enough for you, um, we have the Super MIMO connection, which will allow you to link multiple of these boxes together for even more. Um, uh, and so I'll, I'll get it later into, so the Super MIMO cable would allow you to take two of them and give you eight antennas. Um, but uh, at the end, I'll go into a system that links actually eight of these boxes, which would give you 32 antennas. Um, but uh, this is, obviously it's not hobbyist level um, prices on, on these sorts of things. That starts to be a significant uh, investment. But um, in any case, in keeping with the high dynamic range, we have 16-bit A to Ds. Um, the RF uh, uh, block diagram is, is similar to uh, an SBX uh, daughterboard plus USERP. Uh, it, 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 we've got um, RF comes in. There's also a calibrator. So it has built-in calibration. It can calibrate out IQ balance and um, 
as well as uh, uh, phase, be, uh, phase and amplitude differences between antennas. And so this is entirely self-calibrating, and you can do uh, beamforming uh, automatically with this. Uh, so we, we switch, and then we have six bands of, uh, of amplifiers and filters. So this has all custom half-octave filters that cover the 700 meg to uh, 4 gigahertz range. And uh, these, these filters allow you to operate in the presence of very strong signals. Um, you know, these are uh, 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 you know, custom ceramic filters that have uh, very, very good roll-off properties. And you have much more than 80 dB of attenuation of out-of-band signals. And so uh, you can operate in, you know, you could put this thing at the, at the base of a very high power tra- uh, tower with a very high power transmitter, and it won't affect your receiver. And so, uh, so in, in, in applications that require this sort of being in the presence of very strong signals, uh, this receiver doesn't get crunched by that, and, and you're still able to uh, have very, very good performance, very good noise figure at the same time. So uh, we, signal comes in. We split out to the six different bands uh, based on what you're currently looking at, come back together, variable attenuator, and then into a, a quadrature demodulator, and then we have our baseband filters and the 16-bit A to D. Um, There's also some other circuitry in here for things like um, RSSI and also uh, quickly triggering on on a signal level going over uh, over a predetermined uh, uh, threshold. This will quickly trigger, and you can trigger an acquisition based on presence of signals and things like that. So this is uh, an application that's based on uh, UHD FFT, uh, but we we threw in a new uh, uh, block in GRC that does... Uh, the beam forming and uh, and you know plots the the uh, the antenna pattern. So we have uh, the blue would be the beam and the red would be a null. And you can uh, oh, basically you just have to give it the geometry of your uh, antenna array, and it's able to compute all all of this and do a uh, you know a beam form on, on that. And the beam forming happens in the FPGA. And um, so, actually, th- this is what happens in, in the FPGA in this device in, in the sort of the signal chain. A lot of the boilerplate that handles the the Ethernet and the UHD and control stuff is all all uh, same as what's in normal UHD uh, devices, and um, and so the, just the signal processing is different. So we have the the four streams from the four antennas, and I have the next slide is a zoom in on these. But you get the four streams from the four antennas, and each of those, all four antennas go into each beam former. So you can actually form multiple beams at the same time. And uh, and then those go out either to the one gig or the 10 gig ethernet, or also this, you know, 70 megahertz IF output, which is sort of a a feature that you can use if you have some other device that expects a 70 megahertz uh, IF. But the general use case for this is to use the 10 gig Ethernet, uh, and you can send uh, actually more than four beams. So you can compute roughly 10 beams across those four antennas uh, and stream them out at 60 megahertz of bandwidth each, and uh, and you know get that over the the 10 gig E. So RF specs on this very high dynamic range, um, re- really uh, really good uh, reject- rejection from the custom filters. Um, and you can simult- simultaneously achieve better than a 10 dB noise figure and an IP3 better than 0 dBm, uh, meaning at a particular gain setting. Um, I like to say anybody can make a, 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 a receiver that has a very low noise figure just by putting a lot of amplifiers on it, and anybody can make a receiver that has a great IP3 uh, just by putting a lot of attenuators in front of it. But the, the magic is to produce uh, a receiver that has good IP3 and good noise figure simultaneously, and uh, and so I, I think we've really achieved that with this radio. Um, we're, we're getting some you know really great uh, close in IP3 uh, you know at the same time as this great noise figure, um, and uh, uh, of course very low phase noise. This actually has a YIG oscillator um, in it, which uh, you know of course gives these these phase noise numbers that are, are not really practical in a uh, in a semiconductor based um, uh, local oscillator. So this, this is the overall DSP architecture, and then uh, front end. Each of those front ends uh, takes in, data in from the uh, the radio cards at 120 mega samples per second, <clears throat> uh, 16 bit samples. We do a half band filter to get that down to 60 mega samples per second uh, with 24 bit data, and from then on everything is at 24 or higher bit precision in all the processing. 
Uh, then we have a DC offset correction, uh, which is pretty straightforward, and then the IQ balance correction. This actually uses a, a, uh, a frequency selective uh, IQ balance uh, correction algorithm with uh, 30 points uh, or 32 points. And so uh, this, this has you know, 70 plus dB of uh, IQ balance, uh, which is, is, is quite a bit. And that, that actually, the IQ balance, um, you know, that's in, enough for a, a, a material for a talk in, in itself. Uh, but the IQ balance actually is the largest component, uh, the largest consumer of space in the FPGA. Um, but it, it gives you this really great performance. And so, so there you get, you end up with the 60 mega samples per second at 24 bit INQ. And that's sort of the basic data rate of the rest of the functionality that's in the FPGA. So um, all, all four, you have four antennas at each, you know, four of, each, four of these, everything coming at 60 mega samples per second. And then you take uh, all four of those will come into this beamformer. And, uh, and the beamformer does all the complex math to get you down to a single stream at the 60 mega samples per second. And then you can take that out straight out and it gets, you know, um, UHD framing and stuff and, and go straight out to your 10 gig Ethernet. That's, a, that, that's at almost 2 gigabits per second right there. Um, if that's too fast for your application, you can go down to half that, quarter that, or an eighth that, um, you know, all the way down to 7.5 mega samples per second and, uh, and then s and spit that out. And if you go down to 7.5, then you can actually get four, all four antennas can go over a 1 gigabit Ethernet at that point. Um, but uh, the, again, the normal operation is is that you uh, you're you're getting the 60 megahertz of RF bandwidth. So uh, yes. If you bypass the beam and just get all four signals. Yeah. So um, uh, logically, you're bypassing it. Um, in, in in practice, what you're actually doing is setting the beamformer taps to one comma zero 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 one. And so you you would set each beamformer to basically just look at one antenna. And that, that way, all the delays are matched through the system, but you, you get the individual antennas. And actually, because you can have more than four beamformers, you can use four beamformers to deliver the individual streams, and you can have additional beamformers that form actual beams across uh, the system. So you can really have, you can fit 10 beamformer units in there. So you could do 10 beams or six beams and four individual antennas. And, and of course, it's all, you know, you, you get the Verilog with it, so you can modify it and and change that as, at will. But the idea would be that it's, it's um, pretty complete for your application as it is. Um, was there a question back there? Oh, OK. So uh, were there any other questions about the quad radio, the QR210? Um, so the li list price on this guy is $40,000. So this is uh, aimed more at the, the defense and uh, and intelligence type users or uh, commercial users doing um, spectrum monitoring and uh, and uh, that sort of thing. Yes. State Communications makes the same board, four thousand dollars without the radios. So something for you to look at. State Communications. Okay. I, I don't I don't know what you mean by same, but without radios because it's all radio. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so this has the, 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 most of the cost is in the radios, of course. But um, yeah, so anyway, it has 10 gig E. And uh, um, yeah, so, so that's the, the quad radio. Um, and then, you know, for those that, uh, that have a very big pile of cash burning a, a hole in their pocket um, y y and four antennas aren't enough for you, you can get the Super MIMO hub, which will, and actually, which will allow you to uh, group eight of these together for a total of 32 antennas. Um, and, and at this point, you know, it's, it's quite an expensive system. Um, but I think it's interesting uh, uh, on, on a technical level, and that's why I'm, I'm talking about it here. It's not like a, a sort of a high volume product for us or anything. Um, but this gives you 32-way MIMO uh, and, uh, and beam forming. And you can get 40 beams across 32 antennas at 30 megahertz bandwidth each, or 20 beams on 32 antennas, 60 meg. Um, and the way we do that is, uh, what we produce, uh, basically this is what the stack would look like. So each, each of the rack units, this is one of the quad radios. It's a one rack unit device and has four antenna ports on the back and the 10 gig is on the front. And um, so this stack, you would take eight of those radios plus a 10 gigabit ethernet switch and then this 10th rack unit, which is a, uh, just a rendering because the, the enclosure is not done on this yet. Um, and this is a, what we call the Super MIMO hub. 
and uh, that that process is all uh, does all the processing to uh, allow you to get um, the this beam forming across all of the uh, all of those antennas. So so that um, you know when you're doing uh, beam forming, what you really need uh, it, to uh, to uh, get proper alignment between the multiple antennas is everybody, all sampling needs to be done with the same sampling clock. Uh, everybody needs to agree on a time. Uh, and the local oscillators all need to be synchronized. And you're, you also need a calibration signal with all of them so you can, can calculate out the, uh, the different phase delays between the, the pieces of hardware. So there's basically four signals that need to be distributed to all units. Uh, so we use a 10 megahertz a pulse per second, uh, the local oscillator, and a calibrator signal. And, uh, and so this device distributes all of those, uh, in, and it also, of course, synchronizes itself to GPS. And then, um, so that, that takes care of the analog side of it. But then what do you do? Now you have all, um, you know, eight radios, each outputting a 10 gigabit per second stream, or uh, half, a, half of a 10 gigabit per second stream each. Um, and then you have to take all of these antennas Data and put them together and uh, and do beam forming across that and so uh, so how do you do that so what we have is uh, we use a 10 gigabit Ethernet switch so all eight an eight uh, radios with the 32 antennas they send their data into the switch the switch sends it all out to a computation engine which is an FPGA board with four 10 gigabit Ethernet ports and then the FPGA engine uh, sorry the computation engine takes this 40 gigabit per second stream uh, crunches on it and then spits out its 40 gigabit per second stream back out those same ports to the switch, and then the switch has 12 more ports that the users can plug their, um, their uh, uh, receiver of this fire hose of data, which typically would be a cluster of, uh, of computers to, to, uh, to do all that processing uh, on the back end. So, um, so the Super MIMO hub really you know, has uh, uh, a, a very interesting data flow uh, it also has a very interesting um, uh, analog signal path uh, flow, and, and, and that's why I thought it would be interesting to talk about here. So, so this is the device. The computation engine has a Vertex 6 FPGA, a rather large one, and, uh, and we actually have it running at, uh, that's not Teramax, that's Gigamax, but 160 Gigamax per second, uh, meaning 160 billion uh, multiply accumulate operations uh, per second. And that's what you need to do you know, this much beam forming. And we were able to do that in, all in this computation engine, which also has some RAM, so you can sort of store your signal and, and so that you can sort of quickly decide if you like, you know, if, if the signal's important enough to save, you have a, a buffer of, a, you know, a couple seconds worth of data um, in there. So the DSP that happens in here is actually kind of interesting. Um, is there a laser pointer up here? No, okay. So uh, the basic concept is you have your four 10 gigabit in ports coming in. So, uh, so you have your four 10 gigabit ports coming in. Each one is actually composed of eight individual streams uh, at 30 mega samples per second or uh, four streams at, at the 60 mega samples per second. And um, they come in and, and they're demoxed by these devices. So now we have our 32 antennas, each as a separate stream. We send this into this huge unit we call the uh, input align and uh, and deframe that takes those all it's all Vita 49 packets because it's all UHD standard uh, takes those aligns those sends them out in 256 bit wide chunks to these beam forming clusters so you, this this path here is 256 bits wide first it gets one group of antennas a sample from one group then the sample from the next group. And there's eight groups total. And so it takes eight cycles and it forms 10 beams in there. And then the 10 beams come out and they're remuxed back into the uh, 10 gigabit output. And, uh, and the, these outputs would typically be sent to uh, multicast uh, addresses so that uh, a large group of, of servers can uh, participate in the finding of the needle in the haystack uh, on that data. So um, in any case, uh, just uh, does anybody have any any questions or sound interesting? Want to hear more about any part of it? <laughs> yeah, 
if you're a student with that kind of budget, yeah, we can. I'm sure we can work something out. But <laughs> yes, yeah, and, and and I should say, you know, I, I think this. I, I mentioned it yesterday. I, I think it, it really speaks to the power of GNU Radio and UHD that we we have devices that start at six hundred dollars that use UHD and GNU Radio, and you can run those same apps on this system. If you put this all together, it's over three hundred thousand um, dollars, and and you know, and, and at all points in between, and, and so um, it, it's, it's really just it, it tells you how much we've we've accomplished with GNU Radio, and obviously we're still committed to the very low cost stuff, and this was sort of a a, a very interesting um, project for us, but um, you shouldn't expect because of the pricing on this kind of stuff that our, our prices are heading in that direction. Um, we're, we're definitely you know our core focus is of course the low the the lower cost um, hardware. It's just um, this was this was a great way to to leverage a lot of of the technology that we have in usurps and UHD into this this high end device, and at the same time it allowed us to pay for development that was then moved back into usurps. So um, a lot, of, in particular, the Vita forty nine and um, a lot of the components of UHD were actually developed first for this, and, and the FPGA components were, were developed first for this and then ported back to usurps. So um, you know it allows us to. Uh, to, to amortize that investment and, and, and invest overall invest more uh, in, in the in the whole um, you know usurp and GNU radio platforms. Yes. So um, usurps and in particular the, the N series are uh, are capable of doing um, beam forming and um, uh, you know and, and MIMO at you know significant numbers of antennas. So uh, you can if if your specific interest was beam forming, we would suggest that you use the um, the N series and you know N two hundred N two ten and SBX daughter boards, and uh, you can you, you can set up four of them, you can set up eight of them, uh, and, uh, and do that. What's that? Okay. Yeah, with MIMO cables and external synchronization. We've had people do systems as wide as 16-way MIMO uh, on usurps. So this isn't the only way. This is a, a very compact, um, highly, highly uh, uh, characterized and calibrated system um, with you know, sort of amazing performance. Uh, but logically, all of the blocks can be made out of usurps, and, and uh, you know it, you end up with lots of cables and stuff. But you you could make a 16-way uh, MIMO system out of usurps. What's that? Yeah. So you, usurps will get you. I mean, the usurps will get you the, the the current usurps will get you 50 megahertz of RF bandwidth at 8-bit samples, or um, you know the 25 megahertz of bandwidth at 16-bit samples, so it won't get you quite as wide an IF, but it'll get you that kind of frequency coverage. You'll also be able to transmit with it. Um, this is a receive-only device here, um, but and and of course the B250 that we talked about yesterday uh, enables an even denser uh, system. So the B250 is uh, will give you 80 megahertz of RF bandwidth, and it will give you. Um, uh, two-way in the box. So you would get four, four antennas per rack unit, which would be the same as the Quad Radio 210. It won't have quite the same dynamic range and quite the same phase noise performance as the QR210, but um, it'll get, get you the same antenna density. Okay? Thank you.